So the next step is to put in the H3O plus. And I think you drew your arrows like this. Or no, I like this. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, um, who's who, who's a reactive atom here? Who's who is one of our reactive atoms in this picture? Oxygen. Yeah. Which one are you looking at? Oh. Yeah, they're both reactive. All right. So, is this uh, an oxygen who wants to be at the head of an arrow or the tail of an arrow? Now, is this an oxygen who wants to gain electrons or lose electrons? Lose electrons. Yeah, this oxygen wants to lose electrons to get rid of its negative charge. So, do the electrons want to move towards this oxygen or away from them? Away. Away. So, should this be at the head or the tail of an arrow? The tail. Okay. And the arrows always point in the same directions. We can see that here. This oxygen wants to gain electrons because it has a positive charge. This oxygen wants to gain electrons because it has a positive charge. Um, and so the electron should be moving in this direction. Okay, now in this case, I think you ended up with the correct drawing of the products anyway. Um, but if this was a mechanism problem, you wouldn't get much credit for the arrows going in the wrong direction. So it's very important uh, to clearly look at those. So again, it's important to have good terminology like the second language book has for the two parts of the arrow. Uh, which part is this part? And which part is this one? So what types of guys tend to go at the tail, positive or negative? negative. Yeah. And who tends to go at the head? Positive. Yeah. There's some exceptions to this. But generally speaking, things, negative things tend to be at the tail, and positive has, seems to be at the head. And you don't, we don't really need to memorize that. As long as we know that this shows where the electrons are coming from and where the electrons are going to, it's kind of common sense. We know the electrons want to go away from the negative place and want to go towards the positive place. Now, the mistake that uh, we made here by putting the arrow on the wrong end, that actually is extremely common. Why do people always make that mistake? Because they forget that the arrow shows how the electrons are moving, and they think that the arrow is supposed to show how the atoms are moving. And they say, oh, the hydrogen is moving from here to here. But the, uh, this is not about atoms, it's about electrons. Um, so the hydrogen is moving this way, but that's not what the arrow shows. The arrow shows that the electrons are going this way. You should always be thinking in your mind, how the arrow shows the movement of the electrons. That's how we uh, figured that out. Okay, um, so then we can draw a product from that. Of course, your picture looked different because you oriented it different, but uh, we would get these two products. And remember that once we get to step two, we don't, we don't care what happens to the magnesium bromide, so we won't worry about that anymore. So that would give us uh, this product over here. Okay, so uh, that's what we got here. All right, so it's good that we uh, had a chance to review this. Since yesterday, have you had a chance to do any problems with grid yards? I was doing problems with my, I think I did a good couple, but I'm gonna focus on that kind of stuff today. I okay. see if there's anything else I needed help on before. Yeah, that's fine. You can see, I think we talked about this maybe at the end of the, uh, the last time. Uh, I, I kind of mentioned that uh, when people try to cover every single reaction, what happens is that they forget the ones they've already gone over. So this, I, I think, is going to be an important reaction. This is certainly very important reagents. Uh, so you want to make sure before your exam that you're comfortable with this. And the way to do that, again, is try to find one of those multi-part problems with a whole bunch of grid yard problems in a row. Because yesterday we did three of these in a row, and you can see for most people that's not nearly enough. You've got to do like 15 of these in a row before you get comfortable with it. Okay, so you need to find a bunch of examples of that. Um, so uh, to review here, what type of functional group is this? And what type of functional group is this? Alcohol. Primary, secondary, or tertiary? Um, secondary. Right. So let's take a look at the alcohol oxidation and reduction handout and see where our starting material is. So where is the starting material on the handout? Well, you see that we started here with the aldehyde. The reduction. Yeah, and we're moving in the reduction direction. That's right. This is clearly a reduction because now the carbon is losing bonds to oxygen. Right? The carbon started with one bond to oxygen, then it ends up with, uh, on, uh, I, I misspoke. The carbon started with two bonds to oxygen, and it ends up with only one bond to oxygen. So now we're clearly moving in the reduction direction towards the left. Notice that the arrows here show oxidation is towards the right, and reduction is towards the left at the top of the hand down. All right, so we started with this aldehyde. Now we didn't start with formaldehyde. 
that would have two hydrogens. We started with a regular aldehyde in the second row. Uh, and then where did we move to? Can you find trace with your finger? Yeah. We moved down to the secondary alcohol in the reduction direction by adding basically R minus. Remember that the, uh, the grid yard is basically a source of R minus. Uh, and we actually drew it here, right? Here is the R minus. The grid yard is the source of a, because R minus just means a carb anion. So here we have the carb uh, anion. So that took us down uh, to, uh, to the secondary alcohol over here. So it's good to keep tracing your steps out through the table. Our sources of R minus could be either a grid yard or an alpha lithium. Either of those would give us the same thing. And then we'd add that. I don't think we talked about alpha lithiums yesterday. But it, it behaves pretty much the same as a grid yard. Um, so, so that just becomes positive anywhere that that's right. becomes negative. So suppose this had been the reagent. Well, you'd do the same exact thing. You would erase the covalent bond. And you would replace it with an ionic bond by putting in charges. And then you can see this is going to now. And then, since this is the reactive atom, you would put this carbon at the tail, and you would look for somebody to put at the head. Well, those are the precise same steps that we do with a grid yard. So you can work with an alkyl lithium exactly the same way that you would work uh, with a grid yard. And again, this would end up attacking the carbonyl. Um, so you can see either of those on the test, so it's good to know about both of them. If you're doing a synthesis on your own, you might as well just stick to one thing. So maybe grid yards are a little bit more comfortable to us. But you should also know uh, how the alkyl lithium. So the key thing is they're both sources of R minus. Because if we have the general form of a grid yard here, here's the general form for a grid yard. Well, again, you erase the covalent bond, and you replace it with an ionic bond, and you can see this is a source of R minus, a negative charge on a carbon. That's what we've been doing here all along. We should talk for a second about names. Uh, what's the name of this type of reagent again? And what's the name of this reagent again? Yeah, I, I was kind of muttering that very fast. Alkyl lithium. That's a very logical name, right? Because alkyl just means carbon chain. So it's a carbon chain attached to a lithium. It's really less of a name than just a description. All right, and you might have also heard of organometallics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's an organometallic? Well, what does organo mean? It means carbon containing. Mm -hmm. Organo means carbon containing. So an organometallic is something that's got carbons and a metal. So is this an organometallic? Well, yes, it's got the carbon chain and a metal. And is the alpha lithium an organometallic? Yes, because it's got the carbon chain and lithium. So organometallic is kind of the, the, sub, uh, the general category. So Grignard is one type of organometallic, and alpha lithium is the other type we've learned about so far of organometallic. And it helps to have the same name because they both behave the same way. So they're both organometallics, um, but they have two separate names. Okay? All right. But less important than the names is knowing how they react. But you should know the names in case the instructor is talking about it. OK. So that gives us uh, these reagents here. Now, grid yards are very important for synthesis. So we should keep working here, um, make sure we understand grid yards and then how to use them in synthesis. OK. So uh, let's see. Where did you get stuck here? Uh, for a second, you didn't know where the head of this arrow was. Well, remember, it's reasonable to put the head here because this is the delta positive. Yeah. Um, and you also, um, uh, we got messed up with the arrows on the uh, protonation here. So the arrows show the direction the electrons are moving, not the direction the hydrogen is moving. Those are both important points. 